I'm here today to uh, give you a little more thorough review of how the tap-in console from Tamron, um, how it actually operates. And in a previous episode, we took a look at the overall build and design of um, this particular accessory for your new Tamron SP lenses, as well as detailing what lenses are compatible with it at the moment. And so I encourage you to take a look at that if you haven't already. Before I jump into this, I just want to give a quick shout out to Rode. Some of you have been complaining about my sound, my um, lav mic, it shorted out a few weeks ago. And so I reached out to Rode and they were really, really great to uh, quickly turn it around. And in the, the time that from when I sent my lav back to them and I got a replacement one, it was only about 72 hours. And so they really gave me great service. And so I want to say thanks for that to Rode today. So in this episode today, what we're going to look at is how the actual software component, which is really where the rubber meets the road, and how it actually plays out in terms of calibration. And so the software is available uh, from a free download. I'll throw a link down below if you want to take a look. And, and it is the tap-in utility software. And so a couple of things about that, obviously you've got to download the software itself, and um, which is, is very quick. It's, it has a very small footprint. And, uh, and then um, run it from that. One thing to note about operating the software is that it does require a constant internet connection. And so um, if you're looking to use it out in the field where you have no kind of internet connection, you're going to be out of luck there because it seems to rely on internet connectivity. In fact, it even uh, details that in the uh, manual regarding it. So when you've got it installed and you've got your actual lens, and so um, in this case, um, and I, I did promise you that I would detail my experience, I sent in the uh, 45 millimeter VC lens that I own because it does require a firmware update, both it and the 35 millimeter um, VC lenses before it's compatible with the dock. And so I uh, sent it out on Tuesday of last week when I recorded the first episode, and I had my lens back in hand by, I believe, Thursday. And, and so anyway, um, it was either Thursday or Friday, but the turnaround was very quick, and, uh, and it functions perfectly with the tap-in console. And I'll detail a little bit about that process today. So in this case, I've got the uh, 85VC here. And so uh, basically what you need to do is just line up the... Um, the lens itself with the bayonet mount. There is a marking on the top of it and one other little helper that I found while there's no marking on the actual bayonet, bayonet mount on the side there is a uh, stamped in serial number and I find that that actually lines up perfectly. And so it's just slightly, it's not... It, it doesn't ratchet into place quite as smoothly as what you'll find uh, typically mounting a lens on a camera does. However, I found that even in just a week of use that that's already smoothed up a bit and so not really a big deal in the long run. So anyway, once you're connected there quite quickly on the software, it will show up and um, one of the first things it will do is to actually check for um, if there's any updated firmware for the lens. I was actually surprised to find that although the 85VC is a very new lens, there was already a version 2 um, firmware available for it. And so I um, updated that process only a couple of minutes and, and so it was done. One of the complaints about the Sigma um, utility software for its USB dock is that it's a little bit confusing in the way that it talks about writing the settings. And, and some people have you know kind of freaked out because they're just making an adjustment and it seems like something is already happening. Um, it, it's a little more clear. I think the Tamron software, it's pretty simplistic to use, truth be told. And, and so I think you'll find it um, fairly easy to use. And basically you make whatever setting changes you want. And then there at the bottom, there is a box that says apply setup to lens. And only when you click that um, will it actually uh, write those settings to the lens and you'll get a pop-up box saying, do not d disengage tapping console lens unit or turn off computer while data writing in progress. You click okay. And um, it takes just a couple of seconds writing customized parameters onto lens and boom, um, lens custom setup complete. And so the actual execution of making changes is really, really simplistic. So let's jump in and let's look at the three different screens that you have access right now and to detail what takes place. The first one that you come to, uh, first tab, is possibly the most important. That is the focus adjustment tab. Now, most cameras allow you to do, um, I say most cameras, um, most of the higher end cameras, I should say, allow you to uh, have make what's called an AFMA, that's Canon speak, or a micro adjustment to the lens's focus. 
basically when a lens comes out of the factory, um, it, you know, there's some variance between camera bodies and there's also some variance in the lens samples as to how they're going to focus. And so it's a unique combination between each lens and each camera body, um, how focus is going to be achieved. But as a result, sometimes you end up with a, a prominent back focus or front focus. And, and so a front focus takes place, very simply, front focus takes place when the lens consistently focuses. Let's say this is the plane of focus. The lens consistently focuses in front of that, or what you might call your foreground. And, um, and back focus is the opposite, of course, and that is when the lens consistently focuses towards the background rather than on the um, correct plane of focus. So the good news is, is that a consistent front or back focus can be corrected through AFMA. Your problem is, is that if you have a lens that inconsistently focuses, in other words, it doesn't consistently front or back focus. And that's been one of my primary beefs with uh, some of the Sigma lenses that I've reviewed, is that I just didn't found, find that um, focus was consistent. And even through calibrating the lens, even using the dock, I wasn't able to fully achieve a consistent um, focus behavior. And, and so that, that's a problem. For me, at least, I've not had nearly the same issue, although Tamron is also a third-party lens manufacturer, and both Tamron and Sigma have to reverse engineer um, Canon and Nikon's algorithms for focus. It seems like, at least as far as in the Canon sphere, it seems like Tamron has been able to achieve that much better. And so um, with both the Tamron 45 and 85 VC lenses, I've been able to achieve good and consistent focus. And when I reviewed the 35 millimeter and the new 90 millimeter VC, I was able to achieve the same. So really this is about taking something that's already good and trying to improve it. Now, going back to cameras AFMA, in this 6D body, if I'm using a zoom lens, it allows me to set a value for the, um, the wide end and then on the telephoto end. But it has to be calibrated at one fixed focal length for each of those positions. So often the recommendation is to calibrate about 50 times the focal length. And, and that helps to give you um, a kind of a standard. For me, um, I find that if I can only adjust a lens um, in one location, and, and let me add to that, if you have a prime or a fixed length um, lens like this 45 VC or 85 VC, that means there's only actually one calibration point that I can make for it. And so I've got to choose a distance. So going back to what I do, I find that for me, um, you know, I'll do AFMNA at kind of the expected standard, but if I'm not necessarily pleased with the field results, I'll redo my calibration kind of at my most common focus distance. And, and that way I get a, a, you know, kind of a better result overall. So instead of having just one uh, focus position, what the uh, tap-in utility allows you to do is to set actually three different focus positions. And so you can calibrate um, focus for um, right close to minimum focus. In this case, that's 2.62 feet on the 85 VC or um, 0.8 meters. And then there's a middle distance focus, in this case 11.5 feet or 3.5 meters, and then calibrating at infinity focus. Now, trying to calibrate infinity focus um, in an actual room um, can be somewhat challenging. So I, I did it at about 18, 19 feet. That was the limitations of, of the room that I was working in. One other thing that I want to add to this is that while there are no zoom lenses yet compatible with the, um, the tap-in console here, um, obviously, Tamron is planning for future zoom lenses that will be compatible because um, while these fixed length lenses, they only allow you to uh, set three different focus distances, but obviously at one focal length, in this case 45 millimeters. But there is actually room to make a total of 24 adjustments. So what that means is with a zoom lens, you'll be able to not only set the three different focus distances, but you will also be able to set it up to where you have eight different focal lengths. Um, where you've done a calibration at. And so know that, yes, that's going to be a, a time-consuming process, but you're going to be able to really dial down incredible focus at a variety of focus distances and also focal lengths as a part of that process. And so um, I'm kind of actually looking forward to seeing just how great I can um, dial in a, 
a zoom lens um, that in the future that will be uh, compatible with this dock. And so um, for those of you that have already asked the question, no, the 24 to, current 24 to 70 VC or 70 to 200 VC, 15 to 30, none of those lenses are compatible. Only the new SP series that has this new look um, is going to be compatible. And right now that's the 35 millimeter, 45 millimeter, 85 millimeter, and 90 millimeter. And I fully anticipate some new lenses coming within the next year that will be compatible with all of this. And so in the case of the 85 VC, I and just know that these values, they are specific to me. I, I typically use um, Rican Focal for um, making my kind of automating the adjustment process because the one challenge here is that there is no automation. You're simply making changes um, to either front focus or back focus by adding in single digit values between minus 20 and plus 20. And, uh, and so anyway, that's, that's the same that you can do in the camera body, except in this case, you can do it at three different focus distances. And so I, what I did is I actually set up my calibration setup and used Rican Focal starting at minimum focus and then at the medium focus point and then for infinity focus. And then I would just plug in, I would do, run that test multiple times, come up with a consistent value, plug that into the software um, or into the lens through the tapping console, write it to the lens, and then I could reset the actual body calibration back down to zero and, uh, and then run it in the next stage. And so what I ended up, again, specific to my lens uh, camera combination, was a plus five at minimum focus, a plus six at the medium range, and then backed off a little bit to plus four at infinity. And when I field tested these results, you can see I got very, very consistent focus accuracy. And so I'm very pleased with the end result. And it shows that while this is a minor variance, yes, that I'm able to kind of perfect autofocus performance and get the optimum results out of the lens. And so uh, that was a great result for me. I had a little bit more work with the 45 VC. Um, I, and I had found in the past that I had some variance in my overall um, focus results. And so we're going to uh, plug the 45 VC in and I'm going to detail my process with that. And so I initially on my camera body, I had plugged in a value of, of actually of minus 10, which um, turned out to be not really the optimal value um, in this situation. And so um, what I ended up doing is that I first calibrated at minimum focus. Now with the 45, 45 VC, that's a very, very close um, focus distance. Um, one of the advantages of the 35 and 45 VC is they focus down very closely. In this case, under a foot, 0.95 of a foot or 0.29 of a meter. And so I ended up with a value of minus three, which I consistently got. And, uh, and then um, at the medium distance for this lens, surprisingly, is actually only two and a half feet because of the overall focus range that is the where middle distance comes so I ran another calibration you know just a little bit further out and I got a minus four value and then at infinity I had to play with it a bit because I found that the result I got in the lab wasn't agreeing with what I was getting out in the field. It really, the lab initially suggested a pretty huge calibration at infinity at around minus 15. But I found that I was, that was really drawing a lot of front focus. Um, and so I knew something wasn't right. So I went back and forth and know that this is a, it's a process. I took several hours to dial down this lens to where I got it, where I feel is pretty much perfect. And I ended up with a result from field testing of only a minus five at infinity, which is a nice, you know, linear progression, minus three, minus four, minus five. And, and these results seem to be working very, very effectively for me. But just note that that is a bit of a process. But in results here, you can take a quick look at, I went out and shot at a variety of distances and I got really, really sharp results. And so now a good lens has become uh, really exceptional because of having such great autofocus as a part of it. And so if you're willing to invest the time, this screen right here where you can do your focus adjustment, it can really be a big help. But just know that it will take you some time working the process. 
If you go to the second tab, um, it's actually a focus limiter and it allows you to affect the behavior of a focus limiter or a lens equipped with a focus limiter. Right now, the only such lens um, that exists that's compatible is the 90 millimeter macro lens. And so um, what you, you might find helpful in that is that um, to provide a little bit more of an overlap, uh, say that if you're, you know, you shoot a lot of macro, but sometimes you run up to the place where you're just out at the edge of the macro, you can extend that boundary out a little bit without taking much of a hit and autofocus speed and still really achieving what the focus limiter is about or even program a little bit of overlap between the settings. This would become even more handy when you're looking at a, a telephoto lens, for example, that has um, a focus limiter and be able to tweak that behavior there. And so in this case, neither of the lenses that I'm calibrating does this apply to, and you'll find that all the settings are grayed out um, because there is no appropriate setting for that. The final tab is labeled miscellaneous, and so um, it, it enables a couple of things. Um, first of all, it'll allow you to deal with full-time full manual focus override. In my case, I like having manual override, and so I'm leaving that setting um, engaged, but what you can do is also change the sensitivity of the overall focus ring. And so um, that's another factor that you know you might find helpful if you tend to do a lot of manual focus and you, for example, if you're shooting video and you want to tweak the behavior of focus um, to suit your video shooting patterns. So that's a very helpful thing because these lenses really have very nice focus rings and so they are useful for um, video work in my opinion. The final thing that you can deal with is um, dealing with the actual VC mode on the lens. And so there are three different settings that you can choose. Um, one being the standard factory setting as the way that the lens came. Second is a viewfinder image stabilization priority. And so that's really going to focus on getting the VC on as quick as possible and getting your uh, image stabilized. Um, the third option is capturing image stabilization. I would recommend this if you're wanting to do um, a lot of uh, panning or your type of shooting to where what you really want to do is just get a sharp image, but you're not so concerned. And frankly, with a 45 millimeter and 85 millimeter lenses, particularly with the 45 millimeter, um, viewfinder stabilization is not really a huge deal for me most of the time because um, it's a short focal length. It's easy to handhold anyway. And, and so right now I have got, um, in both of these lenses, I've got the capturing image stabilization. That's the setting that I'm trying out right now. And uh, in the case of the 85 VC, trying to correct that behavior where the, when the VC is engaged, the, uh, the lens actually, when it auto focuses, it kind of hesitates for a split second before locking focus in a way that it doesn't when the VC is turned off. Um, checking this setting as I have, I think that it's making a minute difference, but not fully correcting that issue. I'd hope that it would fully correct it, but that's not been the case. But uh, to conclude all of this, this is really, it's, it's not a huge investment overall. It's not cheap either. In the U.S. market, it's around $60, $59.99 for it. Um, but... If you are, you know, if you have, if you've bought a number of Tamron lenses in particular, I think that it's a worthy investment. And even if you have kind of a, a favored lens that you really want to get the maximum potential out of, if you're willing to put some time into it, it really does give you some nice control over the lens. And I think owning the dock is, or console, is also worthwhile in the ability to receive firmware up, updates for your lenses because um, that can help with future compatibility. And, and as when you're buying third party lenses, and I don't hesitate to buy third party lenses, I think these days there are third party lenses that are just as good, if not better, um, than first party lenses. And so I want the best bang for my buck. Um, and so I don't hesitate to buy them, but I do recognize that sometimes when camera bodies are updated, first parties like Canon, Nikon, Sony, they're not concerned about maintaining compatibility with third party lenses. That's not a priority for them. And so um, having the ability to quickly receive firmware updates means that you're not having to deal with sending your lens in for calibration, and it just um, helps to future-proof your lens. And so I'm really happy that Tamron has brought this out. I'm happy that uh, Sigma has the USB dock. And, and some have been concerned about this uh, basically offloading quality control um, onto you as the buyer instead of them doing it at, at the factory. I can see that point, um, but at the same time, as I pointed out earlier in this review, 
The reality is, is that if you have an inconsistently focusing lens, uh, no amount of calibration using the console or the USB dock is going to change that behavior. If you have a lens that inconsistently focuses, you need to send it back in and have the factory fix it. And so I don't think that this is really a replacement for quality control. I think that it's more about the reality of being able to fine tune and tweak lenses, which I think is advantageous. Uh, but also the ability of future-proofing your lens, and, I, and I, that's what I think makes this a really smart move for um, Tamron and for Sigma, is that it helps to eliminate some of the fears that people might have that they're going to get a new camera in the future and their lens is going to be bricked, and they're going to have to deal with sending it in for calibration, and some people are fearful of that process. Um, but anyway, I, I think that it's, it's a, a wise investment if you're going to invest in third-party glass in the future. So hopefully this will help you to detail how this software works, how to um, kind of get the most out of it, and how to maximize the potential of your new Tamron SP series lenses. I'm Dustin Abbott. If you haven't already, please subscribe. You can follow me on social media down below. Thanks for watching today.